Hello there, it's Andy Ewan from Form Reserve once again. Here on our fourth module, we'll be continuing our bite-sized training on writing bash scripts for the IBM I. It is well worth knowing how to write bash scripts for our day-to-day -day work on the IBM I, just as we use C on programming. In this section of bash scripting tutorials, we'll be taking a look at functions and their benefits, which can save us time coding. I'm all for that. If you missed our previous video in this series, using loops on Bash, it can be found on our channel. Please subscribe to my channel to be notified of when our next video in this series becomes available. In this module, we will be covering how we can use functions in Bash scripts. Bash functions allow us to take a block of code and call it multiple times. This makes our scripts more readable and avoids us having to write the same code repeatedly. These are very handy. Functions in Bash are no different from functions in any other language. In RPG, they are referred to as procedures or sub-procedures. At the end of the day, all very similar. A function lets us split our coding into logical sections. And we then call this section as many times as we need. So a great way of calling a piece of code many times. The bash function is like a script within a script. Functions need to be declared in your bash script before you call them. In which order you place your functions, if you have more than one, is totally your choice. Functions help organise long shell scripts into more modular and reusable code blocks. These code blocks are then easier to maintain. There are two ways to define a bash script. The first way, the word function, then the name of the function, then curly braces. The code between these braces is called the body of the function. This body can be just one line or multiple lines. It depends on what the function is meant to do. The second way had removed the word function before the name and adds two brackets after the name of the function. Whichever way you decide to code your bash scripts, it is up to you. But decide on one way and stick to it. Defining a bash function is not enough to execute the code within. It has to be called within your scripts. To call a function, you just write the name of the function and that will execute all the code within that function. Let me show you the coding of a function in a quick example. The first function, function hello, curly braces, a quick hello to say where we are, and the next line of return. This is optional, I always like to have it coded, again, your choice. And on to the next function, straight into the function name this time with a couple of brackets then the same as above with curly braces another quick echo a return and end those braces now we have to execute both functions hello goodbye and now moving on to give it a test type in function one sh and there we go, I am in a function called hello, I am in a function called goodbye. It's that easy. Let me make the next example a bit more complex. This time we will be passing a few parameters into a function. Parameters are passed into the function and in the same manner that we use for passing parameters into a shell script. We covered this feature in the first of this bash training set videos. I'll put the link into the description for you just in case you want a refresher. In the function we use $1, $2, $3 etc for the order they are passed into the calling of the function. In this example we will pass a few variables into a function and get that function to add them up. This function has to work whether we pass two variables or ten variable values into it. We will call this function sum underscore numbers as it's going to add the numbers passed to it. Open, close brackets, with the two brackets, the curly braces. Some developers use the brackets if they're passing variables into the function. 
It's your call at the end of the day. Next we will set the variable sum to zero. Then we will use a for loop to step through all the parameters that are passed to the function. We use the dollar at sign to represent those. Then in a do loop, we will increment the variable sum to add the next value passed to it. When it has stepped through all the past variables, it will echo the current value of sum. Next, we execute the function passing five values to it. Let me give this a test. Function 3.sh. And there we have it. It summed up all the variables to 15. Great result. That's given you a couple of examples of functions and how to use them. Next on the list is variable scoping. What do I mean by that? Variable scoping refers to the visibility of variables when we can rely on them variables to contain the values we expect. These are known as local and global variables. When a local variable is set inside a function body with the same name as an existing global variable, it will have precedence over the global variable. It can be set and used within the function. As soon as it leaves the function, its value will revert to the global value. Global variables can be changed from within the function. Let me show you an example. Let me declare var1 with a value of a, and var2 has a value of b. Next, we will code a function called test function. Then we declare the variable var1 as local with a value of c, and change var2 to d. Then an echo to show the value of those variables still within the function. Then when we leave the function, and then an echo to see the values it has in var1 and var2 variables. Next, we execute the function. And again, an echo to see what values we have in the var1 and var2 variables. Let me run this script over to bash function 4.sh. A quick explanation. Before we go into the function, var1 is a and var2 is b. Then we go inside the function where var1 is c now as it's a local variable. var2 is then set to d, so var2 is a global variable being set inside the function and outside. After executing the function we have var1 is a and var2 is d. So at the end, var1 is set initially and changed in the function, but reverts to its global value on leaving the function. Where var2 is initially set and changed in the function, but retains its value after the function is executed. And the last topic of this module, return values. Bash is not like other programming languages in regards to returning values from a function completion. Bash functions don't allow you to return a value when called. When a bash function completes, its return value is the status of the last statement executed in the function, with 0 for success and any other value from 1 to 255 for failure. The return status can be specified by using the return keyword, and it is assigned to the variable $question mark. The return statement terminates the function. The number returned can be thought of as the function's exit status. If you need to return a value from a function, the simplest way is to use a global variable. Let me show you an example. Let's go straight into a function, hello planet. Then we will echo hello there $1, the first variable passed to the function. Then return 255, which is an error code as it's greater than zero. Then we will call the function, firstly with Mercury, and then we will call it again with Venus. Then we will echo out the function return code using dollar question mark. Let me run this one. Function 5.sh. 
hello there Mercury, hello there Venus, and the function returns a value of 255. That wraps up this topic on functions in Bash on the IBM I. I hope you enjoyed it. Look out for our next topic in this mini-series on Bash scripting, processing data in Bash. Subscribe to our channel so you'll be informed when the next video is available. The link is in the description. Thank you, stay safe and see you soon. If you need any further details about open source or IBM I, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. Even through these difficult times, my company, FormaServe, is still providing training on our favourite platform, the IBM I. Whether it's remotely, through a mask, we are still here for you. If it's traditional programming using RPG and CL, or the modern methods of integrating open source into your infrastructure, we are here to help. We have over 30 years of teaching on the IBM I. Why not use us to get up to date and be at the forefront of the post-pandemic world? FormaServe uses Microsoft Teams software to develop top-notch training material. Take a look, you will not be disappointed. As many students have found, all our training is very informal, it's the way to learn. Find out what it's like to have fun while training. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM I video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking out our website learning.formaserve.co.uk and our YouTube channel. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.